So I am calling the meeting to order at 5.32. Uh, the MVUSD Board of Education is holding a regular virtual board meeting tonight that all can participate in remotely. You can join via Zoom. Specific directions on how to participate are located on the Board Education webpage on the district website, mvusd.org forward slash board. The open session part of this meeting agenda begins at 7 p.m. Uh, before moving into closed session, we will identify certain information related, related to item D4 on tonight's agenda, which will be closed session conference on real property that is governed by government code 54956.8. Pursuant to that section, the board will hold a conference with its real property negotiators with regard to the real property located at 1185 Sierra Avenue in Napa, California also known as the Vintage Farm Site. The agency negotiator attending closed session is Ravinger Mangwala, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services. The negotiating parties are the district and David and Davidson Home. It's the item under negotiation are price and terms of payment. Thank you, everyone. So is there any public comment on closed session items? There are no public comments, President Martin. Okay, seeing that there are none, the Napa Valley Unified School District will now adjourn into closed session. See you at seven. Okay, everyone, we are opening our virtual meeting. We are now in session. It is now 7.03. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Isela Martin, and this is the Napa Valley Unified School Board District or excuse me, School District Board of Education. The MVUSD Board of Education is holding a regular virtual board meeting tonight that all can participate in remotely. You can join via Zoom. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Isela Martín y somos el Consejo Escolar del Distrito Escolar del Valle de Napa, MVUSD por sus siglas en inglés, NVUSD. La Junta Regular del Consejo Escolar de NBUSD es de manera virtual, así que puede participar remotamente. Se puede, se puede unir vía Zoom. Uh, interpretación, oh, excuse me, interpretation in Spanish is available for tonight's virtual board meeting. To access interpretation from a computer, click on the interpretation icon on the bottom of your screen. From within the Zoom application. On a mobile device, click on the More button on the bottom of your screen and choose Language Interpretation from within the Zoom application. This is a separate channel that will allow you to hear English to Spanish translation concurrently. Please note, interpretation services are not available when you join our meeting by, by calling in, excuse me. Our interpreters for tonight's meeting are Marcy, Valdivieso and Claudia Lindgren. Marcy, please translate these directions on our English channel so our Spanish speaking families can hear the instructions. Uh, buenas noches a eh, todos. Eh, yo soy Marcy Valdivieso. Eh, estoy aquí para proveer servicios de interpretación conjuntamente con mi colega Claudia Lindgren. Para acceder a los servicios de interpretación, por favor, presione el mapa mundo. A, abajo en, en la parte inferior de su pantalla, seleccione los servicios en español y ahí podrá escuchar los servicios de interpretación simultáneos eh, mientras está el, el principal hablando en inglés. Eh, estos servicios están disponibles por medio de la aplicación Zoom. Eh, si usted está llamando por teléfono, esos eh, servicios no están disponibles a no ser que haya bajado la, la aplicación. Gracias. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Specific instructions on how to participate in the meeting are located on the Board of Education webpage on the district's website, mbusd.org forward slash board. Can we please start with an attendance roll call from Vera Morales? Yes, Trustee Martin. Here. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Present. Trustee Jenkowitz. Present. Trustee Water. Present. Trustee Hurtado? Present. Trustee Shank? Present. Trustee Gracias? Present. Student board member Carla Magaña? Present. Quorum present, thank you. 
Thank you very much, Veda. Thank you for joining us tonight in our virtual Napa Valley Unified School District Board meeting held exclusively online. We continue in uncharted territory as we deal with COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to thank our employees, our families, and the entire MVUSD community for how you have supported each other and come together during these unprecedented times. The meeting tonight is in accordance with the open meeting rules of the state of California per the governor's order. I'm going to start tonight with some basic instructions on how we're going to be using Zoom and involve the members of the community. All the board of trustees and the superintendent are on video throughout the entire board meeting. Staff members are present, but by audio only. Members of the community will not be on video and will be muted except during public comment. During public comment, any member of the community that wishes to speak must raise their hand using the raise hand feature in Zoom. You will be unmuted and you will be provided three minutes to speak. There are two ways to make public comment within the time allotted for public comment on an eligible agenda item. To comment by video conference, click the raise your hand button to request to speak when public comment is being taken on an eligible agenda item. When it is your turn to speak, your name will be called out. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comments. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. Instructions on how to raise your hand are available on the district's website at mvusd.org forward slash board. To comment by phone, you will be prompted to raise your hand by pressing star nine to request to speak when public comment is being taken on an eligible agenda item. When it is your turn to speak, the last four digits of your phone number will be called out. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comment. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. Uh, instructions on how to raise your hand by phone are available on the district's website at nvsd.org forward slash board. In addition, community members were allowed to submit comments via email at public comment at mvsd.org up until 8 a.m. this morning. Public comment received after 8 a.m. the day of the scheduled meeting will not be read into the record. However, the public comment will be announced as received after the deadline. Excuse me. And it will become part of the meeting archive as long as it was received before the meeting is officially called to order. For every agenda item, I will prompt the meeting participants who have joined us via Zoom for pu public comment. Excuse me. Please follow the instructions just provided when you'd like to comment on an item. Before we begin, I would like to thank everyone for their patience as we continue to navigate this new technology. We have been called to order and conducted our attendance roll call. We will go forward with our agenda. Report from closed session items. In closed session, the board took action to approve the following staff recommendations. Effective 2020-2021 school year, the following administrative appointments have been made. Christopher Reddy to the position of assistant principal, Harvest Middle School. Stefan Schaefer to the position of assistant principal, River Middle School. Amy Worrell War to the position of interim assistant principal, American Canyon Middle School, and Carliza, Carliza Baltier to the position of interim principal, American Canyon Middle School. In addition, the board concluded the annual evaluation of our superintendent, Dr. Musetti. The hiring and performance evaluation of the superintendent are two of the most important functions of the Board of Education. The outcome of her performance evaluation is the following. On June 30th, the NVUSD board <clears throat> completed perhaps, as just stated, the most important duty any board has, the superintendent's annual evaluation. The evaluation was for the previous school calendar year, but the leadership capabilities of Dr. Musetti have been exemplified during this global pandemic. Dr. Musetti received a positive evaluation. As a superintendent, you must answer to the demands of all constituencies within your district. And during a pandemic, it's seemingly the community at large. In the end, she is guided by one question, what is best for all of our students? Dr. Mercedes has set a clear plan of what needs to be done for the good of the district, setting vision, 
objectives and goals. She has achieved benchmarks and continue to make progress in all six goals of the strategic plan. She has led with integrity, understands and continues to develop and execute strategies for best practices for maximizing the achievements of all students. Our strategic plan provides direction and scope over the long term and the execution of short term objectives in order to achieve long term goals was a key element in her positive evaluation. While navigating the difficult terrain of the last few years, she has had realistic optimism, a steady confidence that is essential to leading our community. She has the unique ability to simultaneously confront challenges while striving to raise the bar in addressing achievement. We as a board have the utmost confidence in the superintendent. She has displayed exceptional leadership skills, financial acuum and forecasting, has assembled a strong and competent cabinet and utilized transparent communication to cre create relationships. We as a board need to acknowledge our level of confidence in these unprecedented times. Dr. Massetti has, has displayed patience, flexibility, and a deep commitment to providing students with a robust, robust education, being mindful of the needs of faculty and staff, all being executed while pivoting based on the onslaught of changing data. She has been responsive to the critical issues of today. She has well articulated and identified barriers and obstacles to opportunity, is disrupt disrupting their negative impact, and continues to implement policies and practices that support learning outcomes for each and every student. She has established new norms and new ways of working. In wow. times of deep crisis, Dr. Massetti has tapped into the reserves of ingenuity, innovation, and resourcefulness. We express our gratitude for her ability to reframe challenges so that she can address them and provide success on behalf of every student of NVUSD. Thank you, Dr. Massetti. Thank you, Trustee Jenkwitz. <laughs> That was a lot. Thank you so much. I appreciate the full support of the board as we work around our mission and our vision to continue to educate our students here in NVUSD with the best capabilities possible. So I want to thank your support and thank you for those beautiful and kind words. It really means the world to me and my team. So um, tremendous gratitude. It's an honor and a pleasure um, to serve this board. So thank you. Thank you, Rosanna. We will now go into, and thank you for the report, Robin. Is that all for the reporting tonight? Yes, thank you. We will now proceed with the flag salute. If uh, David Gracia would uh, walk us through that, please. Certainly. If everyone will please rise. Join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A three announcement procedural item. This meeting is recorded for live streaming and archiving on the district YouTube channel. For a detailed review of any meeting agenda item, the archive video can be uh, referenced, located on the district webpage at nvusd.org. President Martin continued by saying, saying the public can join the virtual board meeting remotely via Zoom. <laughs> Participation instruction and the process for public comment can be found on the district website. Sorry, I'm following a script here, even with my own name on it. <laughs> Um, we would, I've also informed the public that this, um, that this uh, meeting, there is Spanish interpretation. Um, E4, approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. By Mr. Joe. Second. Second by Ms. Water. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Carla? Would you like to vote on our agenda? Since this is your first meeting, you can you can abstain if you'd like to. Um, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Um, I, I do, I do uh, President Martin, I do wanna, um, and we're so excited about Carla Magana joining us. 
I do want to recognize in, in honor of her first vote <laughs> um, of her first board meeting um, of her year as the student trustee. Um, I had a great onboarding session with her and she is so incredibly eager around governance. Um, she was so hungry for information and she asked great clarifying questions. And we uh, afforded her the opportunity as it states in the, in the policy around her um, trustee seat, student trustee seat that she gets um, to access training and development around governance. And she has taken us up on the offer to attend the student board uh, workshops offered and sponsored by the California School Boards Association. So we're already very impressed um, by you, Carla. So thank you so much for your commitment. Thank you. And I know some of the governance, hardcore governance people here are probably really excited about that. <laughs> so you're, all, you're all one of a kind. You're all one of a kind. Thanks. Rosanna beat me to it. I was going to actually do it under recognition of visitors. And of course, because this is your first visit with us, um, I didn't want to go to that first vote, but I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Carla. But yeah, you know, you know the way that I flow with <laughs> things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let the other trustees say um, a few words if they'd like. Welcome to the awesome. team. It's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Good. Congratulations. Happy you. I can guarantee you it'll be no year, uh, a year like no other. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, we're so glad. We're so glad to have you on board. And um, we told everybody that you applied. It was the second time you applied. And um, it shows that persistence pays off, if this is a payoff. And it will, it'll be a great year. Thank you for coming on with us. Welcome, Carla. It's good to see you again. Um, and looking forward to um, hearing you here in our board meetings and, um, and enjoy those uh, development opportunities. They're really fun, so looking forward to hear what you experience as well. Okay, so I'm going to proceed with approval of the minutes, and I'm going to go ahead, if no one has any abstentions for June 25th and June 30th, I'm going to go ahead and pass those two first as a bundle because I will need to abstain from July 16th. Is that okay with everyone? Uh, point of clarification was Jose here on the 30th? Yes. Okay. I, I joined. Yes. Thank you. I okay. was going to bring that up. I joined the meeting uh, late. All right. So just one, one minor correction to the, the minutes of the 30th. We'll move to approve. Okay. So a first by Mr. Gracia. Second. Second. A second by Mr. Joe Shunk. <laughs> um, I believe this is roll call, right? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Student representative? Yes. Aye. And okay, so motion passes. July 16th. I'll move to approve. So second. First by Mr. Gracia and a second by Mr. Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. And student representative. Okay. And a vote from our student rep. Okay. Now, um, recognition of our visitors and employee organizations. Is anyone able to see if they are available or here on our Zoom? Yes. Um, Manny, can you uh, please um, unmute? So we, we've uh, brought this back. This is typically um, on our agenda in our in-person meetings, and it's, it's our first board meeting, and we've quite settled into Zoom and quite accustomed to it. So we brought this back as our um, con one of our constant agenda items. So, uh, Mr. Ruiz, can you please um, welcome or unmute? Um, Gail, can you please raise your hand? Hi, I'm Gail Young. I'm president of Napa Valley Educators Association. 
Nice to see you all. Thank you, Gail. And I do not see our um, other labor leaders, um, uh, Leslie Walder nor Edgar uh, Ventura, but I, I do see uh, Mr. Mike Wilmarth, who serves on the team. Uh, would you like to unmute him on the NVA team? Good evening. Thank you all for the hard work you're doing in some very challenging times. Mm, you're welcome, Mike. Okay, welcome NVA. Thanks for attending tonight. Okay, we move into reports and informational items. Uh, Board of Education and Stu Student Board Representative informational items. So we did move, um, and I'm not quite sure if this happened in our last meeting, where now we're moving our reports to the very beginning. Um, so we will start with um, G2A. G2, Board Representative Reports G2A Curriculum and Student Support Committee. David, Gracia, Elba, Gonzalez, Maris, and Cindy Water. We did not meet, nothing to report. Okay, so no report. J2B, Facilities and Technology Committee, David Gracia, Robin Jankowicz, and Joe Shunk. Again, we did not meet, yeah. nothing to report. Okay. Um, G G2C, Finance Committee, Jose Ortaldo, Robin Jankowicz, and myself. We have not yet met. We meet, I believe, in two weeks. Okay, J2D, Policy Committee, Elba gonzalez Mares, Joe Shunk, and Cindy Water. We met way back on July 14th, so I think we've had meetings since then. Of course. Um, G2F, City of American Canyon, liaison representatives, Joe Shunk and myself. Uh, we met with the City of American Canyon on the 20th. Um, we spent a considerable amount of time, uh, what was then fresh news, uh, seems like a long time ago, uh, discussing our plans around reopening. Um, they, it, you know, as a group, uh, staff and the two, two uh, council members, uh, you know, gave us positive feedback and at a subsequent city council meeting, I guess it was last week, uh, during council member comments, uh, they reflected that publicly. So um, we covered other miscellaneous topics, but uh, that was uh, obviously an item of uh, substantial interest by all parties. Thank you, Joe. G2G, City Napa, City of Napa Liaison Representative jo Robin Jankowicz and Cindy Water. We did meet on um, ju uh, July 20th uh, with the city manager and some other representatives. Um, let's see, we talked about the City of Napa, COVID-19 general updates, reopening our schools, um, uh, briefly mentioned the SRO contract, which we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, Facilities use and use by the community during COVID-19, uh, parks and recreation, facility use check-in, uh, the Measure H project updates, you know, what was going on at our schools, kitchen roofing projects, security cameras, finishing things. Um, oh, and, you know, the one that everyone's interested in, the housing development check-in, which is really the Costco check-in. And um, apparently uh, Costco is, you know, things are moving along there. So, you know, we'll we'll have one, I suppose. And then status of general plan update and vintage farm and, you know, everything's just slightly been slowed down by COVID, but they're getting back on track. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Water. And then G2H, Town of Yountville, liaison representative, David Grossi and Robin Jekowicz. Yes, we had a meeting scheduled for July 23rd, 2020, wherein we were prepared to update the town on what we have been doing regarding COVID, the phased plan to reopen schools, our policies on facility use during the pandemic, and any developments or progress on the property the district owns in the town of Yonville. During an email exchange around the agenda setting, we were informed their only concern was what was to happen regarding the property the district owns in Yonville. We had no update to give them on that situation as we had been fully focused on school reopening and how to operate schools in a pandemic. When we let that be known, they saw no value in continuing to meet, so we ended up canceling the session. 
our next meeting is not scheduled until January of 2021. In lieu of meeting with us, they suggested we talk to the newspaper reporter for The Sun to tell them our plans. <laughs> Thank you for the report. And board, please keep me in line. Please keep me in line. We did skip over a couple of um, procedures here. So we missed F and G1. <laughs> So public comments on non-agenda items. Um, members of the audience, so after reports, we're going back to F. Members of the audience may address the board on any school-related matter that is not on the agenda. The board will not take action on any issue raised during this section of the agenda in as much as board action is limited to the posted agenda items. Speakers are requested to limit their comments to a maximum of three minutes. And also, um, are there any public comments on non-agenda items received via public comment at nvsd.org? Uh, no, yeah. President Martin, there were none. Okay, thank you. Manny, are there any public comments? Yes, President Martin, we do have a, a public comment. Uh, number 5605 of last four. Uh, go ahead. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. Um, quería eh, hacer un comentario. Mi nombre es Norma. Eh, estuve en la junta de ayer acerca de las aperturas. Can you hear me? Yes. Do, 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 Dr. Musetti, do we want to do translation? We do. So um, one moment, mm -hmm. Norma. Un momento, Norma. Can you get the translator and please put up the timer? Uh, yeah. Yes, one, one minute. Okay. Un, un momento, Norma. Un momento. Oh. Are we ready, Mr. Ruiz, or no? Yes, yes, we are. Continuo? Sí. Gracias. Sí, gracias. Entonces, como mencioné, estuve en la junta de ayer acerca de... Eh, oh, it's going to be simultaneous. Claudia, we need to do, we need to um, take turns because oh, we're okay. on the English Let's channel, please. Sorry yeah. about that. So, okay, got it. Um, uh, Norma, si puede tomar unas pausas para que ella pueda traducir. Gracias. Gracias. Entonces, eh, acerca de la reapertura de las escuelas y eh, donde estuvo usted, doctora Musetti. Eh. We had a meeting yesterday in, re in reference to reopening the schools uh, where you were present, uh, Dr. Musetti. Entonces, eh, pues, al escuchar eh, la sección de preguntas y comentarios y respuestas, eh, estuve con preocupaciones, inquietudes eh, generales. Eh, no acerca específicamente de mi caso en particular como madre de familia en este distrito. And uh, I was listening to the questions, the comments, the answers, and uh, of course, you know, I have concerns as a mom, you know, family in this district. Eh, y pues sobre todo con respecto a, eh, se mencionó que iba a haber dos horarios uh, mm -hmm. en que se iban a ofrecer. Eh, dado eh, el apellido del el nombre y apellido del estudiante. Entonces, hay padres de familia que expresaron tener más de eh, un hijo atendiendo en este distrito. And uh, you also mentioned that they were going to have two different uh, hours for the students to attend the school, and a lot of it would be based in reference to name, last name, and uh, of course, some of us have uh, different children in the dis within the district. Entonces, eh, pues, se me hizo eh, un poco preocupante de que eh, Yo siento que se debe de evaluar y ver eh, basado en el caso particular de cada persona. Yo sé que usted mencionó que es mandatorio el hecho de que los estudiantes vayan a la escuela y estoy totalmente de acuerdo, pero conforme a las circunstancias presentes, siento que debemos ser un poquito flexibles para esos padres de familia que realmente nos necesitan. And I think each case should be evaluated individually uh, based on, on their needs. And you did mention that school is mandatory, 
but uh, I hope uh, that uh, some of us or some of the parents uh, could, could be considered based on their present circumstances. Eh, más que nada, eh, los, los estudiantes son los que se van a ver impactados y eh, por ejemplo, algunos padres de familia tienen que trabajar y el horario que les tocó es totalmente eh, inflexible. Uh, eh, some, un momento. Some of the students will be impacted uh, because uh, of the parents' work hours and that the schedule is rather inflexible. Okay. Eh, sé que hay un, un turno eh, matutino vespertino que se había manejado para eh, que los estudiantes tuvieran acceso a la eh, virtual. Ah, perdón, se cortó. Turno matutino y vespertino. ¿Y después qué dijo? Eh, que sé que los estudiantes van a, eh, se, se les eh, está ofreciendo el turno, bueno, más bien asignándosele el turno uh, matutino y vespertino para que eh, se conecten a la plataforma virtual donde se va a hacer la impartición de clases en cuanto a la apertura de escuelas. And I know that some of the students will be assigned to morning, uh, to the morning lessons and some to the evening le uh, or afternoon lessons. And uh, I mean, they're assigned to it and they have to connect uh, to the virtual platform. Entonces, eh, algunos eh, estudiantes, algunos padres de familia habían mencionado que tenían eh, hijos con eh, planes individualizados, de, con IEPs, y pues están con la dificultad de que algunos pues eh, tienen el mismo horario y va a ser muy difícil para ellos estar alternando con uno, otro, hasta tres estudiantes. Entonces, yo sé el, el sacrificio y el trabajo tremendo que se está haciendo por parte de usted, doctora, pero también por otro lado, se me hace muy importante eh, eh, evaluar estas situaciones para tratar de buscar el mejor apoyo a los estudiantes que son nuestra prioridad independientemente de las cuestiones que se están suscitando en la actualidad con la pandemia. And uh, I understand that there are uh, some parents have children with IEPs and uh, of course uh, they have, you know, the, the same or different hours and some of them have up to three students in the family. And I understand, doctor, that a lot of sacrifices uh, are being made, uh, you know, by you, by the district, but uh, I hope uh, all these situations are evaluated and uh, I understand that we're doing the best we can uh, during this pandemic. Entonces, quería, por favor, que si eh, se contemplara eh, una encuesta que escuchara ese aspecto eh, y que obviamente no sé el número exacto de estudiantes que están eh, eh, inscritos en nuestro sistema, pero eh, si, si se pudiera hacer algo sería magnífico porque eh, eso, si no se hace algo al respecto, va a haber un retraso tremendo y va a traer otros problemas, creo yo, en mi opinión. And uh, uh, hopefully, maybe we can contemplate doing a survey in reference to this aspect. Uh, I don't know how many students are enrolled in this system, but hopefully something uh, could be done about it. Sure. The, uh, in my opinion, um, possible issues and we don't want that. That's my opinion. And I just uh, really appreciate, like I said, all the tremendous work that's being done. and. You know, there's a lot of uh, situations that do need to be uh, contemplated in a case-by-case -case, um, scenario. Um, I, I really um, feel for those parents that have two or more children in the district and that are sometimes trying to accommodate all, all of this situation with um, just one parent because the other one's at work or, or they're single parents and um, it's hard. So if you guys could please, you know, come up with a plan to, to, to best these students, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Manny, do we have additional comments? There are no further comments, President Martin. Okay. Thank you very much. We now move to G3. 
G3. G G1. We've got to go back to G1. Board and Education Student Board Representative. Report. Any reports? So I will start um, with her. Carla Magaña, if you have anything to say right now, it would be nice. A nice little welcome. Uh, uh, actually, so I, I, I will usually start with you. So, and then I will go down the line as if we were sitting in our boardroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, can I, yeah, I can go ahead. Uh, so our other student representative, Selena, from, over from American High School, uh, American Canyon High School brought to my attention of the new like sex ed requirements for high schools that I think were under the plan and she wrote me like a pretty lengthy email that I, I didn't know about but um, about making it a whole like requirement throughout high school so it's like you have PE that's one requirement like the rest of the classes and she was just explaining to me how it would be difficult for students um, are adding another required class to their kind of schedules already, um, along with um, kind of having to pick and choose which electives they want to take throughout their high school career. Um, and she just wanted me to bring to light um, how difficult that could be for some students that um, don't necessarily want to um, take a year off from their electives because electives are only classes that we get to choose. So I just wanted to kind of bring that to light a little bit for her. Carla, there will be, I think she's referring to the um, health requirement, and there will be a presentation on that by the Instructional Services Division at the August 20th board meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. So, thank you. Just for your information. Okay. Thank you. Mr. David Gracia? Yep. So I had a couple of things that I've done this uh, since our last board meeting. On July 22nd, 2020, I attended the three Zoom sessions covering elementary, middle, and high school and our plans for reopening. Uh, the district had a strong presentation and did a good job. Unfortunately, some internet trolls crashed the first presentation and spewed some vile and hateful remarks in chat, preventing our parents from providing feedback via that feature as it had to be turned off. Dr. Massetti acted quickly to terminate the chat, condemn the racist trolls, and return the meeting back to proper order. Manuel Rees was instrumental in assisting the superintendent with closing off the chat and with our subsequent investigation into the disruption. I just want to reiterate Dr. Massetti's message that NVOSD has no tolerance for racism and hate. And then on August 5th, 2020, I attended the middle school and high school Zoom presentation as part of the I only got to catch part of the elementary school. And that concludes my board report. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Joe Shunk. Um, like David, I've attended a couple of the town hall halls on re reopening. Uh, I've also been doing what I can professional development wise by attending uh, CSBA webinars on deferrals, reopening and distance learning, which seems to be topics of the month. I've also attended uh, some of the CSBA um, and I would like to uh, thank uh, the uh, particular uh, Ms. Amy Little, who wrote us, uh, sent us an email, reading, uh, I think to tell us what we went to do about racism. Uh, she and I had a, a very uh, productive 45 minute uh, conversations. Uh, I will uh, uh, be making a statement later on about what, what we are doing and what we have done. Um, I can only say that, that uh, the district has been very active all 16 years I've been on the board in addressing issues of equity, uh, not only uh, for our students reflected in the students and how we treat them, but also in, in curricular activities. Uh, 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 adopting 
uh, uh, or approving uh, textbook and, and books that are more diverse and more closely reflect our, our student population. So I wanna thank the people who, uh, who sent us emails. Uh, I can reassure you that we've been at this for at least 16 years and we'll probably be at this for another at least 16 years. So thank you. Thank you, Hosa. Uh, Ms. Cindy Water. Hmm. Okay, well, on the 14th, I went to uh, the board policy uh, meeting and 15th, uh, the COVID task force, the 16th, we had our special board of ed meeting. Uh, the 20th, the city of Napa meeting, also uh, the Zoom meetings that David alluded to about, um, about reopening the schools. And then on the 26th, I went to, I listened in on the parents meeting, the special ed parents meeting. And then yesterday I did a one hour long, um, listen to a, a talk from, uh, from University of California, San Francisco, uh, doctors presenting on, um, how to you know reopen schools and it particularly they were talking about the uh, trans about covid um, and infection levels with different age groups and uh gee whiz um and and the meetings yesterday and thank you to the staff um uh last night for the great meetings they were extremely informative and i think the uh, community appreciated them and then just for fun on monday i had an in-person masked eight feet apart, uh, goodbye to a former student who, Yesenia Garcia, who graduated from Vassar while sitting in her parents' apartment in Westwood. And she is on her way today to a PhD program at Emory. And um, hard science, she's going to save us all, folks. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Ms. Robin Jankowitz. Um, I too attended the city of Napa meeting and was intending to attend the town of Yountville meeting, which as Mr. Trustee Gracia said was postponed. I also attended the engagement events this week, um, the faculty um, session, as well as the elementary, middle and high school sessions. Um, each event, as everybody knows, was provided to update information, but it was also to answer real time questions. And I, I found that to be um, insightful and really supportive to the great FAQ that everybody can find on the website um, that I've utilized quite frequently. It's a, a great source of information. Um, Joe and I attended the Napa County Board of Education meeting and I, like Ms. Water, listened to the UCSF Children's Hospital ongoing webinar series on COVID-19. Thank you, Robin. Elba Gonzalez Mares. You're on mute, Elba. Fine, I already did my report, no. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so it's good to, good to be here with you all and uh, welcome Carla again to the, to the board here and thank you for that input. And um, it's, it's, it's always learning, uh, we're always learning here. So, and, but the, the important thing is that the information's there. Um, what I really always uh, just appreciate with our with our information is our NBUSD TV YouTube channel um, because I can't always make all the uh, presentations uh, with our reopening. Um, so it's just been really nice to visit uh, one of my favorite channels to go back in there and sometimes re re listen um, as I as we all are trying to um, you know navigate these these changes. Um, so just trying to participate. Thank you all for your emails and input. We are listening and we are having conversations. Uh, one particular conversation um, in, that I had with, uh, recently with Dr. Massetti was a lot about childcare. And so uh, put her, you know, uh, in, my, in, my, in my work, I'm in connection with, with First Five Commission with, with having to do with children zero to five and childcare is an issue. So I was happy to um, uh, connect uh, Dr. Mercedi and the team with some really um, strong advocates of childcare in our community that already exist. As childcare is an issue that um, is not, it's not, uh, you know, our, our, uh, as NBUSD, it's, it's a community-wide issue and concern, and, and it's, it's everyone's responsibility to address the issue of childcare. 
Um, so trying to uh, bring all of those conversations to the to the table as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elba. Um, so um, unfortunately, I couldn't join you in last Zoom meeting, and Elba wanted to um, praise you on the meeting. I actually was able to tune in on the very last parts of it. You handled it like a professional. You ha I think you've had a lot of training. <laughs> We're a lot of experience just watching. Learning from um, the best. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, with that said, um, everyone knows that there was a change in career paths for me. Um, so I have been almost like Elba, kind of um, getting input from very constituents um, uh, through and via email. I have to say the last time, I'm trying to do this on a weekly basis. Um, and through that, um, came to realize that I have to do it more than once a week. Um, with everything that's going on, um, last Saturday I spent about three and a half hours trying to answer um, all my emails. And being standing pre president, I did ask everyone for a formal apology for not getting back to you in a timely manner, and that still stands. But with that said, I got through it, so I conquered three hours worth of emails. And um, but it was it was well. Um, uh, it, it's nice to know that there are people seeking your opinion or asking them uh, that um, you know we have we have a voice, and and, and it feels really nice. Um, with that. Um, there is a huge concern and I'm not in agreement with Norma 100% from one of our constituents that we heard tonight, but um, given the um, COVID and how it's growing and especially in the industry that I am, um, I also joined a COVID meeting and more with industry leaders uh, around agricultural and our farm workers and, and, and knowing that um, the, the number is ever growing of um, COVID cases within these families. Um, with that said, um, in this uh, virtual meeting that I attended, that was one of the concerns and I just wanted to voice that out that maybe we don't hear enough from those families because they are considered essential workers. And so they are tired. They don't know what's happening. And so I think that maybe some more of these concerns will start coming out once school is back into place when they start realizing how hard or maybe how easy um, this may be. Um, but I think we won't be able to tell until school goes back into um, play. And that's just my personal opinion, but um, I just wanted to share that uh, because this was something I was hearing while I was at work. And of course, this is coming from our, our farm workers and, and so really the employees that I, I represent. So um, um, also, Carla, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I had Carla on my radio show. Um, it almost converted itself into missing a show, but we figured it out. <laughs> um, but she shared with us, uh, you know, the passion, her persistence, uh, something Cindy mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, the fact that this is the second time she's applying and she didn't give up. And I don't think she will give up on us. So she knows she has a, um, that it has been challenging given COVID, fires, earthquakes, but we're all still here. If you see us, we're all still standing and we're, and we're kicking butt, I would say. Um, with that said, de nuevo, bienvenida. So now I can move to G3. <laughs> okay, so superintendent and executive staff. All right. Well, um, it's our first board meeting of the 2021 school year. Um, and so here we are starting another year in the Napa Valley Unified School District. Um, so I did uh, prepare just some remarks focused on, on primarily the engagement that the trustees have alluded to. Um, it's been pretty extraordinary. Um, and I have some, you know, relative comparison points. And so I really want to take some time to note the engagement on behalf of NVUSD families. So tonight I'd like to start out by thanking the thousands of parents who've joined us during our virtual parent meetings regarding the reopening of school over the course of the last couple of weeks. Many of the trustees alluded to their participation as well. The parent engagement here has just been exceptional and I'm having a really hard time finding a superintendent in my professional networks who has experienced the equivalent number of participants 
um, that we've had here in NVUSD relative to our size of district. It just shows how deeply the NVUSD community cares about uh, their children's education. Our parents at all three levels, elementary, middle, and high, have demonstrated engagement. They've attended these sessions, they've been you know, long, and they've asked very meaningful, clarifying questions as they make sense of what their children's education is going to look like in a couple of weeks. I'd also like to specifically mention, as some of the trustees alluded to, that we also had a meeting dedicated to special education families. That was really well attended. There were nearly 300 participants. And our Noche Junta en Español, um, I was very, very excited to see that we had close to over 500 attendees, which was just extraordinary and phenomenal. Um, and that was in, in addition to the, I'm sure many of them were in the sessions that we held in English with the interpretation services. So I'm um, also eager for the information, our, our Spanish speaking families. Across all of our meetings, including our special board meeting on July 16th, clearly the reopening of schools is a high interest topic. And we've held um, virtual engagement now, you know, over the last three or four, three, three to four weeks, um, including that special board meeting. I'm sure there were repeat uh, attendees, but um, across all of those virtual meetings, I counted that we were close to 8,000, uh, which is just great evidence around the progress we are making in goal three of our strategic plan, um, which is specifically on communication, community engagement, and advocacy. And so, um, we've hit it out of the ballpark as far as community engagement goes based on the, that data and those numbers. I am a firm believer that an important aspect of effective leadership is about transparent, honest communication and reciprocal two-way engagement, even when it's hard, around difficult, challenging topics. Um, it's been an exhausting marathon of, of, of engagement. I want to appreciate um, all of my team that's had to prepare for those sessions deliver in those sessions. They've done a great job. Many of them are in the first few weeks of their new roles. Um, but it's also exha it's exhausting, but it's also equally inspiring. So thank you, NVUSD families, familias, for your inspirations. It definitely feeds our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Um, we've also come to learn, as has been alluded to, through these uh, reciprocal engagement sessions, there's a lot of challenges that our, our community is facing right now. And it's difficult. Um, I like to fix problems. I like to fix complex problems. And unfortunately, in this situation, some of these challenges are, are sort of beyond the scope of the school district. And so I do appreciate um, Trustee Gonzalez Mares for putting me in contact with some of the leaders in our community around childcare. We have not given up as we shared at our elementary meeting. We're going to continue to pursue um, childcare options and find ways where our schedule around compensatory school that's re as required by the state does create some inflexibility for families and we understand that. Um, you know, what are some, some ways that we can um, potentially uh, provide uh, childcare, especially those who are, who are in um, the highest of need. So we'll continue to work on that effort. Um, last night, the majority of our families who shared questions, um, our sessions were close to 3,000 people just uh, last night alone. Um, they shared questions and concerns, but they also, I think the majority of them simultaneously expressed, is, expressed gratitude for the hard work of our NVUSD district leadership team. And I want the community to know that those expressions of gratitude that came in the meeting and in follow-up e emails mean the absolute world to us um, and serve as ongoing mo motivation for us to keep working relentlessly in partnership with all of you, our families, to deliver on the best educational experience during these volatile pandemic conditions. Even though we all recognize both parties involved, the community, the school district, all as one, we recognize that there's no perfect solution that will please everyone. Um, and I think people have a lot of compassion and understanding around that, and for that we are grateful. I look forward to our second board meeting of the year that coincides with our first day of school, August 20th. And I look forward to reporting how all of this hard work over the summer um, has positioned NVUSD in comparison to a lot of our neighboring districts and other counties um, to successfully open schools in a new non-traditional fashion, but still with the care and the commitment to excellence and equity, even during these very challenging times. It was also mentioned um, by our, a couple of our trustees, uh, specifically Trustee Gracia. I wanna thank him for that. Uh, many of you know, as he stated, one of these sessions was unfortunately plagued by an incident of hate and racism. 
And as I stated uh, that evening, and will proudly repeat tonight at our first board meeting of the 2021 school year, I want the community to know that our Board of Education, um, our, our senior leadership team, which includes my assistant superintendents, and I myself, as your superintendent of schools, have no tolerance for hate or any derogatory language which demeans others because of their race, ethnicity, disability, gender identity, gender expression, religion, cultural heritage, or sexual orientation. These principles manifest for us as an organization in goal number five of our strategic plan, um, which specifically is stated as equity-centered leadership and inclusive organizational culture. And within that goal, we have a key initiative that expresses that we value equity, diversity, and inclusion in our work. This stance um, taken by the board is also observable in the following board policies, Board Policy 5145.3 on non-discrimination and harassment, and Board Policy 0415 on equity. I also want to just take a brief moment uh, to appreciate the support from the community as we advance this equity agenda simultaneously while reimagining how we open schools to educate the children in our community. And um, none of that work is possible uh, without the partnership of our employees and the collaboration of our employees. So um, it's also a natural moment for me to express gratitude and thankfulness to all of our NVUSD employees across all labor groups, NVEA, NAPS, and CSEA. I'm so grateful for their partnership and their engagement um, during the staff uh, uh, town halls and through the various negotiation uh, sessions that we've had, our NVA council structure that's based on, on interest-based problem solving. We are so much better off than so many of our neighboring districts because of the collaborative spirit of those relationships. We know it's a challenging time for every school employee as we balance the many demands on the system, but we deeply appreciate the collaboration and commitment um, to interspace problem solving that positions us as an organization to address all of these unanticipated hurdles that COVID-19 has put in front of us. So thank you um, to all of our labor leaders, Gail, um, Edgar, and Leslie, for all of your hard work through the toughest of times. Um, lastly, the last three days in NVUSD have been about leadership. I've had the pleasure of spending two days with our uh, site leaders, welcoming our new leaders, the ones that um, Trustee Jankwitz uh, named uh, their appointment tonight, and um, you know some of our veterans, our new middle managers who have now onboarded into new positions. Our entire leadership team did two days, and I want to thank and recognize Assistant Superintendent Pat Andrew Jennings, um, the instructional division that put together as you know, orchestrating uh, two days of deep learning for the leaders in the Napa Valley Unified School District. And I also want to personally thank my four assistant superintendents who oversee the work across the four divisions. Um, today, we spent half the day, despite community engagement last night, a board meeting this evening, we spent time four hours today in an executive leadership um, goal setting session, uh, you know, retreat to kind of set tone for us as the senior management team. And despite their exhaustion, their hard work, um, they were so present and so committed because I know that the four of them are deeply, deeply committed to continuing to improve NVUSD on behalf of the students that we serve. So I want to um, thank them, and that's a nice natural point for me to welcome their reports this evening, the first ones of this school year. And so we're going to start with Assistant Superintendent Pat Andrew Jennings, who oversees the Instructional Services Division. Um, good evening, uh, President Martin, trustees, and Dr. Musetti. Um, the Instructional, um, as you can imagine, the Instructional Services uh, Division has been incredibly hard at work preparing for the start of the new school year. I'm excited to share with you some of the work that we've been doing. So let's, I'm just gonna do a quick review of some of that work. So our new Director of Elementary Curriculum Instruction and English Learner Services, Matt Manning, um, led a group of elementary academic specialists and classroom teachers to develop beginning of the year lessons for math and, EL, um, and um, English language arts. These lessons will serve as an exemplar of high quality learning for teachers to follow as they plan their own lessons moving forward. As we look to more um, fully integrate multiple historical perspectives in our secondary history courses, our new director of secondary curriculum instruction and English learner services, Peter Hartnack, worked with high school site leaders, TOSAs, and classroom teachers to design 
upcom um, upcoming professional learning in collaboration with the UC Berkeley History Project. Additionally, he facilitated the exploration of several blended learning platforms for high school to support the asynchronous learning time for high school students. Um, a recommendation may come to the board at the next board meeting as we carefully evaluate the options. One key piece of summer work was completing the recommendations from the discipline task force. A dedicated team of site admin administrators led by Mike Mansway, the student services director, worked this summer to complete the discipline matrices and training for elementary and secondary administrators. Due to us starting the year in distance learning, the launch of the new matrices and relevant training will occur later in the fall. As we all know, um, effective and proactive parent and family engagement is critical to the success um, of our students. So to provide increased support to families, several parent and community liaisons return to work early to proactively follow up with students who were not engaged at the end of last year. This is part of our effort to ensure that families have the information and support they need to start the year off strong. Our parent and community engagement coordinator, Viviana Loera, has planned the parent learning series, which starts next week. There will be opportunities for families to receive training from NVUSD teachers and site administrators on the use of our technology tools and online learning platforms, as well as social and emotional support training. As Dr. Musetti mentioned, we have held several family engagement sessions over the last few weeks. They have been, as she stated, exhausting, but very inspiring as we um, listen to the experiences that families um, have shared and some of their concerns and, and um, working to be as responsive as um, we can be. I wanted to spotlight the, I wanted to spotlight um, the special education parent session that was co-presented by our executive director of special education, Terry Lynn Rossetti. Director Rossetti and her team of coordinators continue to plan how best to provide additional support to our students with IEPs. We know there have been additional challenges to families um, of students that have special needs and they are committed to um, being prepared and ready um, for school to start on August 20th and provide those additional supports. The training and support of our teachers is also critical to the successful implementation of robust distance learning. Sarah Knox, our new Director of Intervention and Prevention, has led the creation of our Distance Learning Lab for Educators. This learning lab starts next week with over 50 sessions for teachers to, um, to um, uh, attend and participate in to increase their knowledge and comfort with online tools. And finally, um, you will see a few items up for board approval tonight that will serve to support our implementation of robust distance learning. Um, we want to provide teachers with a full toolkit of distance learning tools. There is a contract for Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a distance learning tool that can be used during virtual and in-person learning. Teachers can use Edpuzzle to assess students' understanding of content and engage students in interactive video lessons. It's a nice component to Pear Deck as well. Additionally, there is a contract for Kami. Kami allows users to take existing documents, including scanned PDFs, and write or draw or type or annotate or comment, um, and um, with all within their own, um, within the Chrome browser. Kami's intuitive design and collaborative features are specifically designed to improve classroom engagement and interaction, all while making the task of providing and completing classroom assignments effortless. This, is, this was a particular challenge at the secondary level, um, providing those tools and also increasing student engagement. As we add more tools to our teacher's toolkit, we will continue to evaluate and assess um, what is working well and what needs to be changed. A more detailed report regarding our efforts to provide robust distance learning will be presented at um, the board meeting on August 20th. I want to take this moment to thank the entire instructional services team for their work this summer. Um, my three direct, new directors have hit the ground running. They have easily stepped into their positions and, um, as Dr. Massetti mentioned, um, you know, been engaged in those uh, parent engagement sessions and um, did an absolutely marvelous job. 
I'm looking forward to working with this incredibly competent team to continue to provide high quality education to the students at NVUSD, even during these incredibly challenging times. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent Rob Manguala, Assistant Superintendent of Business. Thank you so much. Good evening. The COVID-19 pandemic has had and continues to have an immeasurably negative impact. People have died, become sick, lost their jobs, and schools have been forced into distant learning. It will be years, if not decades, before we know the true negative impact of COVID-19. However, not all the impacts have been negative. On a positive note, COVID-19 has forced an accelerated adoption of technology that will result in an improved experience for our families and create efficiencies for years to come. We have closed the digital divide by providing students with Chromebooks, Wi-Fi hotspots, and new digital curriculum. Some of these efficiencies in include um, the ability for families to complete required paperwork. In, in the past, families had to take home this paperwork, complete it, students had to bring it back to school where office managers had to file it. As of today, families at schools across the district have received a notification from our ARIES portal that their accounts have been created so they can read and complete all necessary paperwork online. New families to the district that wish to enroll in the Napa Valley Unified School District also have the ability to complete the entire enrollment process online. If they need help, they have the opportunity to come to the district office for, for support. Of course, this is done by appointment only while maintaining all the safety and social distancing rules. On the assessment side, we're examining the possibility of adopting computer adaptive online assessments that will provide teachers with real-time data to guide their instruction. While all of these efficiencies would have eventually happened, COVID-19 has caused school districts to become adaptive and rise to the challenge on an accelerated timeline. This concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mangwala. Assistant Superintendent Dana Page, who oversees human resources. Thank you, President Martin, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Massetti. It's true, even with the pandemic, the start of school excitement is building as it does every year. Earlier this week, we held our annual management conference. It was energizing to see everyone online, of course, and a great way to kick off the year. The topics we engaged with aligned to the goals of the strategic plan and set the stage for a successful school year. From HR, the focus was on how to lead our employees safely in the workplace and mitigate the risk of COVID-19 exposure. I want to thank my new HR director, Elizabeth Gonzalez, who has been instrumental in helping to develop tools and protocols for enhanced safety and is working with employees who need medical accommodations. Next week, we look forward to welcoming almost 30 certificated employees who are new to our district, including administrators, teachers, and speech language pathologists in our new certificated employee academy. This is a two-day onboarding and orientation experience, which will be, of course, held through Zoom. It's one of the most exciting events for me uh, when I get to meet the folks who are joining our NBUSD team, some of whom who are also just beginning their career in education. Lastly, like Dr. Massetti um, has done, I want to acknowledge the negotiation teams of management and of our bargaining units led by Gail Young for NBEA, Edgar Ventura for CSEA, and Leslie Walder for NAPS. We have been meeting all summer long to finalize details and craft agreements that provide parameters for the working conditions unique in a pandemic environment. The interest-based problem-solving process in our district has once again enabled employees and management to work together collaboratively to reach outcomes that are balanced and fair, mindful of a variety of interests, and serve to strengthen our working relationships for all of the challenges we collectively face now and will face in the future. Thank you to NVUSD employees for your commitment to our students, to the community, and to each other. We are in this together, and we will not only get through this, we will thrive together. This concludes my report. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent of Operational Services, Mr. Mike Pearson. Uh, good evening, President Martin, MBSD uh, Board of Education Trustees, Dr. Massetti, and members of the MBSD community, and welcome, uh, Carla. Uh, we go back a few years there. I've known you for many, many years, and well-deserved. 
uh, and, and I appreciate having the pleasure of being your principal for two years. I'm sure that's why you got this particular position. Uh, only kidding. Uh, moving on. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide you with an update with operational services. I will focus on uh, goal number four. Uh, to my, tonight, my report will provide each of you with an update on actions to date. Uh, for schools uh, to open safely. Uh, before I report out, I need to acknowledge the employees who comprise the maintenance and operations departments in, in Napa Valley Unified. m and employees were presented with a huge challenge when confronted with the expectations from Napa County Public Health, County Department of Public Health, excuse me, the California Department of Public Health and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to be ready to ready school sites for staff. Through an incredible amount of hard work, dedication and flexibility, m and employees have done an exceptional job preparing school sites. This was no easy task, and I cannot thank each employee enough for taking on the responsibility of providing safe places, spaces for uh, MBSG employees to return to work. Specific tasks completed by the custodial team uh, members are the following. They've all completed an itemized list of tasks to clean, uh, deeply clean classrooms, offices, restrooms, and they've posted a checklist of these items for each area when completed. They've reviewed all the chemicals used to make sure that our products are EPA approved, and they are and uh, they have all participated in training to use new equipment that we will be uh, instituting uh, this upcoming year, which is specifically an electrostatic uh, sprayer, which will uh, spray a fine mist uh, each evening uh, to make sure the COVID virus is, does not exist. Uh, specific tasks uh, completed by the maintenance staff, we have a, in, in, the installation of plexiglass in offices and libraries is, uh, has taken place or is continuing to take place. Our, our filter systems for our HVAC units have been changed and will be now every three months uh, during this uh, time period, during this time of the pandemic. Uh, the water at all school sites has also been tested and signage is made for sites to post to, give, to help out with directions and, and reminders uh, regarding the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Specific tasks completed by the administration staff, administrative staff and maintenance and operations, specifically Gloria Aguirre, Albert D'Souza and myself. We've held site meetings with all the principals to review and discuss the facility modifications and the operational tasks to implement uh, when staff does arrive. And we've also reviewed the MBSD COVID-19 school site specific plan. Each site principal is being asked to complete, outlining how each site will minimize risk to staff and students, while also increasing the safe, safety for staff and students. And that concludes my report for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. I think your staff will continue with, um, oh, I'm sorry, you wanna go ahead. This is the next agenda item, um, President Martin, my apologies. Fine, that's for facilities and bond program update. Correct. Yes, uh, thank you again, uh, President Martin. So myself and uh, Kelly Jorgensen, who is with Vent Health Construction Services, are gonna go through a short presentation. And I see that that is up. So we're gonna provide you an update of our facilities and bond program over the summer. It has been a very busy summer uh, that we've been uh, taking on many, many projects. Um, so Kelly, can you go to the next one? Next slide, yes. Uh, all right, and so uh, as I alluded to, it's been a busy summer. We've done a number of campus modernizations uh, at, three, at uh, two, three different sites. We've uh, con continued to work on our finishing kitchens. Uh, we've moved a few portables. Uh, Napa Junction Elementary School continues to get in through the construction phase. Uh, fencing has gone up at three schools. Uh, we've completed uh, two fields, uh, two synthetic fields today. Uh, one is almost completed and one is in the, the middle of the stage. And then finally, we've uh, also had done some great progress on uh, getting ready to uh, select our design build team for uh, the American Canyon Middle School New Multipurpose, what we're calling the student commons. I am gonna uh, have Kelly kind of take us through a little bit more detail on each one of these topics. So Kelly, if you could take it away from here. And you might be muted. Does she need to be invited in? And Mr. Reese, can you uh, allow Kelly to speak. She, she already has the ability to speak, Mr. Pearson. Yeah. She just needs to unmute her mic, I think. Okay. I'm sorry about that. It took me several clicks to get it to work. Thank you, uh, President Martin, trustees, and Dr. Massetti. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Uh, we have been doing a tremendous amount of work at the campus modernization projects at Bel Air, Northwood, and NBLA. The teams at Bel Air and Northwood particularly are working at a breakneck pace to complete roofing, HVAC, exterior paint, and site work. When staff and students are ready to fully occupy, they will return to a site with a new look, a better climate, while NBUSO, NBUSD maintenance and operations staff will see much fewer work orders. Uh, 
At NBLA, the buildings without rooftop HVAC units will are receiving new roofs, and next summer, NBLA can expect the same full treatment received at Bel Air and Northwood. The photos you see here are a nice long stretch of new roofing and gutters, as well as new HVAC units, which will provide better climate and efficiency. And in the center photo, you can see the new paint at Bel Air, which has really changed the look of the campus. Our finishing kitchens, phases one and two, have been working over the summer. Photos show completed work at Browns Valley on the left and Vichy on the right. In the center, you can see the demolition and trenching work happening at Canyon Oaks. As we move to make more NVUSD kitchens work optimally with the food service model of providing hot, fresh, healthy meals to NVUSD students, these kitchens provide serving wells, serving windows, prep areas, scullery and dishwasher, as well as ovens, salad bars, milk and water dispensers. I don't have pictures of portables for you tonight, um, but we are wrapping up a process of moving portables from Harvest that used to be used by the River Charter School and locating them at Northwood to serve the after school program. Our staff continues to be amazed with the progress at the new Napa Junction Elementary site. In this photo, you can see how this construction site is truly transforming itself into a new school campus, and we are so excited to start the planning of moving students and staff in just as soon as possible. Campus fencing phases one and two have also been underway this summer. Phase one is wrapping up at McPherson and Shear, and we wanted to share some powerful images of McPherson and showing the transformed view of the front of the campus with the demolition of the front wall. You can see that it gives a, a much more open feel to the campus. The back side of the campus is now secured and separate from the neighboring park, which was a significant safety issue. Phase two is out to bid currently and will be starting in the coming weeks pending this board's approval. Field replacements are happening in three phases this summer. We have completed work at Memorial Stadium and given the field a new yet somehow classic look at the same time. The work is wrapping up at Napa Vintage and American, High, American Canyon High School fields. Here you can see a photo from the turf installation at Vintage High. Along with having a fresh new look, these four sites will have improved playability and player safety. Over the summer, staff finalized proposals with VPG, our contractor vendor, and this evening we are asking the board for approval of a contract with VPG for two more fields at Silverado and Redwood, bringing the total to six updated fields. At American Canyon, we have been working through the design build delivery process for our new student commons project, which includes providing the campus with a new multi-purpose building. Currently, we have five firms pre-qualified to participate in site visits, submission of proposals, interviews, and final negotiations. The campus layout will change with the demolition of the library and computer lab building, and some underused portables. The new facility will locate itself in the existing footprint of the cafeteria and the project will make some significant landscape updates. As you may recall from past presentations, the design build delivery method helps us select a contractor and architect team in tandem that will work to complete the design and the construction of the project. And that concludes my report for this evening, thank you. Does the board have any questions? Uh, question, more of a comment. Mm -hmm. I think that the removal of the library at American Canyon Middle School from where it's presently located to a new location will significantly open up the middle of that campus as the library is sort of an oddly positioned building right in the middle. So I, I think that'll be a really nice improvement on that location. And then I just wanted to say that um, I'm really glad that we finally separated McPherson from the park that it neighbors. 
Uh, Trustee Grassi, I, I did want to point out that we are um, <clears throat> working closely with uh, some site leaders from American Canyon Middle School uh, and site administration. Um, we were able to um, come to a conclusion that, the, where, as you just alluded, that uh, moving a library will greatly open up that campus and actually what we call activate the spine of the campus or the center corridor of the campus. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really uh, pleased that, uh, that the staff could, could kind of see that. And we, we worked over the course of uh, three meetings uh, to uh, arrive to that conclusion. And uh, it was a very collaborative effort. And uh, I, I just wanted to recognize the staff for working with us uh, to, to support this type of idea uh, because it will, yeah, I think, really improve the campus itself. So thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with I agree with David on that, and I'd also um, like to say I took a spin past um, the new Napa Junction, and that is going to be a beautiful school, and people in American Canyon should be very happy about it. I walk past Donaldson Way almost every day with uh, uh, our our dog. Um, it looked like the fencing went up pretty quickly and then there was several weeks of nothing much happening because the gates weren't added. And I, I don't know if that was unique to Donaldson or if it was that they were just going around to other campuses and trying to get everybody to the same point. Uh, and it looks like we've identified at least five trees um, that don't look so good and might come down. Um, so I'm hoping we can do that before we invite the kids back. Yeah, so thank you, Trustee Chuck. So yes, we, we uh, all the sites were at the same uh, at, uh, status, work status, as far as the fencing going up. And then we were waiting for the, the gates to arrive and they have started to arrive and those will, you will shortly see those start to be going up. As far as the trees, yes, we have identified some trees that need to come down. Um, we actually are working, gonna be working closely with, um, I think it's, now the conservation uh, on, on part of these uh, that project as well too, um, regarding the trees project. So they should, you know, definitely before the students arrive, uh, be coming down to make the campus more, uh, much more safe. Yeah, I'm I'm not a, a horticulturist like Miss Water, uh, but even I can tell those trees don't look real healthy. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for the report. Okay, we are going to move to approval of the consent agenda. Consent agenda, background information on these items is provided to the board prior to the meeting. A common motion takes action without discussion on a roll call vote, unless discussion of an item or items is requested by the board members. I'd like to pull item H4D. If no one has any other items they'd like to pull, then I'd move to approve. I'll second. First by Mr. Gracia and a second by Ms. Water. Roll call, please. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares? Aye. Trustee Jankowitz? Aye. Trustee Water? Aye. Trustee Hurtado? Aye. Trustee Shaw? Aye. Trustee Gracia? Aye. Student board member? Aye. Thank you. H4D, renewal of SH Cowell Grant Award for 2021 school year. So I appreciate that Cowell has been willing to invest in our schools and provide these grants to us, but they have been here for several years now and I'm not seeing results from those investments. I would like to see us get more strategic about how we are using these grants to actually move the needle on student achievement. At the very least, we should be examining the impact that the money is having on the students actually benefiting from the grant to determine if we are if a given course of action was successful or not. I believe we should be using this money to experiment small to see if we can find an impactful solution that we can then scale throughout the district. Presently, it just feels like we're providing extra money to benefit a handful of handpicked schools. 
Thank you, Trustee Gracia, um, uh, our new assistant superintendent, not so new anymore, of instructional services, um, oversees the grant. Uh, would you like to provide any context um, for Trustee Gracia regarding the Cal grant, um, Ms. Andrew Jennings? Um, yes, I would. I, I, um, the Cal grant that comes before you today um, has some modifications from what previous Cal grants had. There are some measurable um, metrics that have been attached to it so that at the end of this year, we can determine um, the impact of the actions that are in that are listed in the, the Cal grant. The other thing I wanted to point out is that it does support what you talked about in terms of that target, small, specific targeted work. Um, currently, Napa High, you'll actually, there's a, a, a item on the contract list today for NWEA, which is a, a a math, uh, like a targeted math assessment tool that will be used by Napa High and it's partially funded with some of the Cal funding. Um, and they will be, Napa High will be working with a consultant specifically on um, ninth grade math at Napa High. So that's part of the funding this year that's going, um, that's coming from Cal as well. Uh, Cal Foundation has also supported some of like just building the infrastructure around leadership, um, especially for our students. Um, and it's based on the feeder, um, the feeder pattern for Napa High. So the schools that feed into Napa High have um, um, the elementary school and the middle school have um, student leadership components that build into the Layla program at Napa High as well. And so some of those structures and the support that comes with that comes from the funding from Cal. And so although it might be difficult to see the, the, like the measurable outcome in terms of test scores, there are um, some improvements in terms of the California Healthy Kids survey, um, in terms of school, um, like student connectedness to school, and their uh, pot, like um, feeling as the adults um, care about them at the school site. I'd like to then invite you to give us uh, some results at the end of the year to see how we've been progressing uh, with this Cal grant this year. I would, I would love to, and and. Um, Matt Manning um, has been pretty intimately involved with the Cal grant, um, the organization, as well as the work that he did at Phillips School, which is one of the, the school, the elementary schools that's associated with um, the uh, Cal grant. All right, I'll move to approve then. Second. I have a first by Mr. David Gracia and a second by Mr. Joe Schunk. Roll call, please. Christy Martin. Aye. Christy Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Christy Jankowitz. Aye. Christy Water. Aye. Christy Hurtado. Aye. Christy Schunk. Aye. Christy Gracia. Aye. Student board member. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We move to I action items. I one general services. I one A adoption of board policy four one one three point five remote working and board policy six one five seven dot A distant learning. So moved. Second. Second. The time. So I do it for <laughs> David Gracia and a second by Miss Water. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Student representative? Aye. Abstentions? Motion passes. I2, business services. I2A, ratification of resolution 21-01 to increase the revolving cash fund checking account. I'll move to approve, but then I have a question. Second. Okay, uh, first by Mr. David Gracia, second by Mr. Joe Schunk. And I just wanted to be really clear that um, we had not previously done this and that we're not now authorized because the wording in the resolution I felt was just a little confusing. So I wanted to make sure um, that what we're doing actually matters and that we're going to really be increasing it and we haven't previously done that. You are correct, Trustee Gracia. Roll call, please. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz. Aye. Trustee Water. 
Aye. Trustee Hurtado? Aye. Trustee Schalk? Aye. Trustee Gracia? Aye. Student board member? Aye. Thank you. Okay, item I2B, Mitel soft phone and mobile phone licensing from Packet Fusion for remote staff members. So moved. Second. First by Mr. David Gracia, second by Joe Schunk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Student representative? Aye. Abstentions? Motion passes. I3, human resources? I3A, request to hire teachers less than fully credentialed. So moved. Second. First by Mr. David Gracia, second by Mr. Joe Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm sorry, I haven't asked for public comment. Mr. Um, Manny, is there any public comment on I3? A or previous? There are no public comments, President Martin. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about that. Um, student representative? Yes. yes. Okay. Motion passes if I don't have any abstentions. Okay. I for A. Agricultural Career Technical Education Grant Application for Vintage High School. Move to approve. Second. Was that you, Jose? It was. <laughs> I, have a first by, <laughs> I have a first by David Gracia, a second by Mr. Jose Hurtado. Do I have any public comment? There are no public comment, President Martin. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student representative? Aye. Okay, abstention, motion passes. I 4 B, Napa Valley Adult Education Course of Study Adoptions. So moved. First by Mr. David Second. Crawford. Second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Do I have any public comment on this item? There are no public comments, President Martin. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Student representative? Aye. Abstentions? Motion passes. I foresee ratification of screen castify subscription purchase for distance learning. So moved. Second. Okay. Do I, uh, first by Mr. David Gracia, second by Mr. Jose Hurtado. Do I have any public comment? There are no public comments, President Martin. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Student rep? Aye. She's beating me to the punch, so I may not have to say student rep anymore. So, uh, abstention? Motion passes. I4D, contract between Dreambox and Napa Valley Unified School District for supplemental digital adaptive math curriculum. So moved. Second. First by David Gracia, second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Any um, public comment on the same? There are no public comments, President Martin. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student rep? <laughs> Abstention? Most motion passes. I4E, Imagine Learning Language and Literacy, purchase of additional student licenses for all students grade third through eighth. So moved. Second. A first by Mr. David Gracia, second by Joe Shunk. Are there any public comment, comments, excuse me? There are no public comments for this item, President Martin. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I got the student representative abstentions. Motion, motion passes. I for F. Renewal of Memorandum of Understanding between Napa Valley Unified School District and the City of Napa. So moved. Second. So I have a first by David Gracia, a second by Joe Shunk. Any public comment on this item? 
No public comments for this item, President Martin. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. May, may I make a statement here? No, yes, you can. <clears throat> In the time I've been on the school board and before, I've been involved in uh, committees and and groups that have uh, and and having been married to the uh, former being married to the former juvenile probation officer for uh, for Napa County, I've come into uh, contact with with police officers, and we've had a we've had a uh, an interesting. Um, history, uh, starting with uh, Chief Dan Menez, who was more of a social worker than he was a police officer. And we moved to uh, uh, Chief Melton, who had children in our school system. Uh, Chief Potter, who has worked uh, to help coordinate uh, uh, marches and has participated in some demonstrations around social justice. And our current Chief uh, Plummer, who was photographed taking a knee uh, the, during the Black Lives Matter uh, demonstrations. Uh, add that to the fact that we've had three extraordinary superintendents, uh, Dr. Uh, Glazier, uh, Dr. Sweeney, and the current Dr. Uh, Massetti. I believe that our um, relationship and the service that we provide students and campuses through this partnership uh, should be an example for other uh, districts and jurisdictions on how uh, law enforcement and education uh, should uh, collaborate in order to protect our students. Thank you. Well, I'd like to add one thing. Um, uh, Dan Monez's daughter went to Napa High School and I used to work with him in my capacity as the city council person and he, uh, he, yes, he had social worker tendencies, but um, he was a very good police officer. Also, he, um, I mean, I don't think the two exclude each other. And I always remember something he said in dealing with the public. He said the most important tool a police officer has is the ability to have a conversation with people. It, he said, this, this is, if you have that, he said, um, the weapon is the last resort, the ability to connect with other people, to verbalize, to have the conversation, to form a relationship is really the greatest tool that a police officer can have. And I think it's really the greatest tool any of us can have. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to I-5 for school planning and construction. I-5A SPC number 11.1-21, request for design services at Napa High School, gym window replacement. So moved. Second. A first by Mr. David Gracia and a second by Ms. Cindy Water. Do I have any public comment on this item? No public comments for this item, President Martin. All those in favor? I should be stained glass at that price. <laughs> Any abstentions? <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you, Robin. I5B, SPC number 19.9-20, request for hazardous materials survey at American Canyon Middle School, multi-purpose room building project. So moved. Second. So I have a first by Joe Shunk and a second by David Gracia. Do I have any public comment on this item? No public comments for this item, President Warren. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, student rep. Abstention, motion passes. I5C, SPC number 18. Dot 17 20 request for special inspection services at campus modernization at Northwood with consolidated engineering laboratories. So moved. Second. A first by David Gracia and a second by Joe Shunk. Do I have any public comment on this item? No public comments for this item, President Martin. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
student rep. Any abstentions? Motion passes. I5D, SPC number 15.49-17, request for special inspection services at finishing kitchen phase three. So moved. First by Sorry. David Garcia, a second by Joe Shunk. Do I have any public comment on this item? No public comments for this item, President Martin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Motion passes. I5E, SBC number, excuse me, 12 11 20. Request for contract with Valley Precision Grading for the, the replacement of synthetic turf at Silverado and Redwood Middle School. It's all moved. First by Mr. David Gracia. Second. Second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Any public comment on this item? No public comments for this item, President Martin. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student rep. Any abstentions? Motion passes. I5F, SPC number 16.2-20, call for bids for the Vintage High, Vintage High Fields Path of Travel. So moved. Second. Okay, so I have a first by David Grouse and a second by Joe Shunk. Any public comment on this item? No public comments for this item, President Martin. Thank you, Manny. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, student rep. Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. J, informational item. Items under this section do not require board action. J1, business services. J1A, June 30th, 2020 investment report. By way of discussion, I guess our meager returns continue to grow ever so slightly. So that's good, I guess. Hey, we moved from from debt to corporate, and you know, pretty strategic move. I mean, we're all in really safe corporates; they're not going to you know generate a ton, but it was at least strategic. We are in better financial shape than we were a couple of years ago. Do you want to add anything, Mr. Manguala, for the trustees? I think that over, overall, if you, if you look at the trend of, of safe investments, you can, you, can, you can see the rate that we're getting is, is substantially higher than something like a 10-year treasury. If you look at a 10-year treasury, which is generally the, the, the safest benchmark in terms of liquidity, uh, it, it's it's been anywhere from as low as 0.5 to about 0.8 in, in the recent history. So the fact that we have some short-term investments ab above that, um, that's positive news. I, I, I would anticipate that uh, we, will, we will see a decline in our investment returns for our, for our short-term short invest investments that we need for cash flow. So I, I would say that this is potentially the peak for the time being. And predictable. Yeah. And predictable, yes. Yeah. So you should see a rate of return that, that generally reflects what you see in a 10-year treasury market or less. Thank you very much. So we move to K, additional <clears throat> suggestions and comments from board members and superintendent. So I, I am just going to add something. I wanted to do it in my opening remarks when I was talking about my career change. And um, this is a shout out to Miss Dana uh, Page and her entire staff. I do not envy your position given the circumstances of COVID, tracing, um, uh, labor relations, um, because this is an ever changing. Um, role and so uh, just being myself and one more staff member I really do praise you because I'm going nuts <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that uh, your work um, I well I guess I do envy because I'm striving to be one of the best so you are a clear example of what I want to turn my department into in the future 
So thank you, Dana, and your, your entire staff. President Martin, welcome to the HR family. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, any additional comments or suggestions? I, I would like to uh, make a, a, a comment if, if I could. Um, it came uh, to our attention um, after uh, last meeting and before this one that, that Stephen Orndorff, who was a member of the Napa County Office of Education, passed away. Um, and we would be remiss in not, in not honoring him for his service uh, to the the students of the whole county. Uh, Steve and I met uh, through some unfortunate circumstance. Oh. Jose, you are paused. Oh. Jose. Am I still? I think you're good right now. Give it another uh, try. We, uh, we met through uh, uh, a friend of mine. Um, and uh, we met several times when we were both uh, presidents of our respective boards uh, and compared notes uh, primarily on how, how, how to lead. Um, and he was uh, a, a prime example of someone who was deeply rooted in his community, cared very deeply for all segments of the community. And I, for one, will, meet, will miss his uh, steady hand and, and leadership County level, so I, I didn't want this meeting to uh, to end without us uh, uh, honoring uh, the work he's done for the schools and the students of 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 our county. That's good. Well said. So I just wanted to congratulate Carla on making it through her very first board meeting. She did a really good job. So. Just want to let her know, Thank and you. I want her to, uh, to let her know they're usually not this short. <laughs> I was expecting longer. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and I just like to thank um, all the teachers, all the teachers, um, for all their patience while we were sorting out, you know, how things were going to be when school starts. And um, through it all, I know they're going to do, work their hardest and do their very best uh, to deliver for our students. And I know because I used to work with a lot of them. And uh, I just thank you all. Thank every, I just want to thank everybody who's been working so hard through uh, what is normally a vacation. So good job, folks. Uh, I just um, want to share a little bit about just moments of reflection that I've had with everything that's been happening. And, um, and I think for me, uh, one of the points of, of reference for me as to what success is looking is just how remarkable um, in, in how the NBUSD team and family has been flexible for, for such a complicated system that um, when pres when, when, when confronted with data and situations in a pandemic and, and feedback and responses, um, how quickly, and when we say quickly, it's, it's I, think, I think the team is, sometimes makes it look too easy of how decisions come about and how much work um, is, is, is taken and the hours that the team has to do to uh, reach a point where um, it can work, right? And it's not, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to have feedback and, and opinions to take things case by case is just unrealistic, right? But to take it as a whole and look at the data um, and be flexible and nimble in that sense, I think that's a tremendous um, point of success for, for the team. So thank you all for, for all your, your hard work and dedication and, and long hours and long days um, in conversation. So I, I think that's, that's what makes it very successful. So thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Additional comments? Cadillac, congratulations. You made it, you made it out. <laughs> um, and you could tell me to slow down or just call me personally if you ever need some help or understanding. Um, 
So under future agenda items, and this uh, this is just an invitation to all our trustees that when we request um, uh, MBUSD and our assistant superintendents uh, for any reporting that we note it, or this would be the time under future agenda items for reports or future agenda items that you'd like to see on their behalf. Um, so uh, David, I think there was a, something that you were requesting. Oh. Can you remind me the number? That way we could just note it here for the record. Sure, it was the Cal program. I was looking for the possibility of a end of year report reviewing the success or not of the grants this year. Okay, so that would be H4D. Okay, thank you very much. Um, President Martin, so just given that it's the first board meeting, um, we do have some pending agenda items that staff and I have slated. For, for between now and December. So we, um, uh, just to summarize for everybody where we are, and I will continue to share this vis-a-vis -vis our um, my weekly superintendent report to the board. Um, we have a presentation on um, uh, chronic absenteeism, mental health, um, CTE, um, attendance work data, works data, which we could probably connect to chronic absenteeism. The athletics, uh, the Title IX Athletics Action Plan and Update, the Math Task Force Follow Up Assessment Framework Plan, uh, the NVUSD Blended Learning Suite, and now the Cal Grant End of Year Reporting. So, me and the assistant soups have been working closely to strategize uh, timing that makes sense in terms of bringing those presentations and/or information items back to the board. That's good. Thank you very much. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn at a remarkable, we're still in the eighth hour. <laughs> oh, moved. Okay. okay. A first by, was that Elba? Yeah. Okay, first by Ms. Elba gonzalez Manes and a second by Mr. Joe Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstention, I can't imagine. Motion passes. We're adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thank you for Bye joining. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.